And uh, Tony Fernandez, Air Asia's chief executive, joins us now from our Kuala Lumpur studio. Just getting to the numbers of that 43% increase in the uh, second quarter. Uh, Tony Fernandez, all down to what? Uh, essentially, these new routes you have and more people, more bums on seats, I suppose. Well, I think uh, a couple of things. Firstly, we are getting a bit of maturity on routes, and so the yields have improved uh, quite dramatically. Secondly, the uh, economy has got better. Third, we've got a, a hub where now people are flying from all over the world, uh, some on AirAsia X, some on other airlines, and using KL as a base to go traveling around Asia. So those three factors played the biggest role. And I suppose ancillary income uh, grew tremendously as well for us. Uh, what are passengers like now? I mean, if I talked to you six months ago, I mean, are you surprised by the turnaround that you've seen? Well, we, we're in a nice position that even during the recession, um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of a product that people would trade down to. So we had a record year last year as well. But we are seeing quite a nice bounce and load factors at about 75 to 77 percent um, has helped dramatically. But our load factors are still quite good. What's, it, what's increased is obviously the yields. Exactly. People, you have pricing power out there. You've got even perhaps a new entrant into the marketplace. Uh, is it this, the case that you've just got a, a market where there's so much room to expand into? Well, this is what I've always said. You know, we're in a very sm large playground. If you consider Europe or America, you know, we're in a playground of almost one and a half billion people. And uh, the great thing for an airline such as us is, unlike Europe and uh, America, you can drive to one end to another, you can take a train. But here there's lots of sea and land infrastructure isn't very good. So if we get the fare structure right, you know, we have a massive market at our doorstep. Uh, you've got plans for listings, I believe, in Thailand as well. Where are you with that? I think the, uh, the, the great part of this uh, quarter is really the turnaround of Thailand and Indonesia, both doing extremely well. And uh, very soon they'll need more capital. Uh, because I think they have huge growth potential. If you think Malaysia has 50 aircraft, Thailand and Indonesia both have, you know, under 20. Uh, we are looking at listings for both Thailand and Indonesia uh, probably in the first half of next year. Uh, both did extremely well, Indonesia being an extremely strong performer, but Thailand doing extremely well in what was a difficult political situation. Uh, now that's sort of calmed down. We are seeing some very strong growth for Thailand as well. Right, with that in mind as well, does it mean fresh routes? Where are you looking for in terms of uh, perhaps undiscovered or uh, little thought of areas of uh, this part of the world which uh, you could exploit? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've continued of our 126 routes. 50 of them are brand new, which never were done. Uh, today, we start a flight to Hajai from uh, Kuala Lumpur in southern Thailand. That area was, you know, obviously tourism was damaged there through all the, the, the violence uh, a few years ago, but we believe now uh, people need the access. We're going to start something to the Maldives, and low-cost airline has never gone to the Maldives, and I think that will be something very interesting for both the country and tourists. And we keep opening up new places in Indonesia and India. India is a big, big growth market for us. We've only just scratched the surface, and we've uh, now going to areas that uh, generally Southeast Asia never went into, Calcutta, Hyderabad, Bangalore. Obviously the south is a natural strength for us with a lot of Malaysians originating from there. But uh, even there we've discovered new routes such as Cochin, Trivendram that haven't been done um, in masses. So huge growth opportunity for us. What about more of a domestic airline there in India? Well, I think right now um, there is uh, no way that AirAsia could uh, operate a domestic airline in India because of the, the rules. But uh, even if there was, I don't think that we'd focus on that. We're very focused on Southeast Asia uh, with our Indonesian Thai and Malaysian and potentially something in Vietnam and Philippines in the not too distant future. Southeast Asia is where our home base is. We feel ASEAN is a huge market, which many people, you know, there's 600 million people here and uh, immense tourism potential. That's where our base is going to be, and we want to bring the world here and fly them around. Tony Fernandez, if uh, Southeast uh, Asia is principally your market, why has the AirAsia X chief executive there said that 
that he sees the possibility of stepping up to the plate and creating an Australian domestic airline? Well, I mean, you know, Azran uh, will, will say things, but he does see a potential there. But that's AirAsia X certainly would not start anything in Australia, and I don't think we would either. Um, certainly, they're doing a super job bringing Australians into Kuala Lumpur, and then they're flying us to Langkawi and to Bali and to Phuket. I think that's what they'll continue to do. I think he was slightly misquoted, but he sees an opportunity, obviously, because with Virgin Blue moving up scale and Tiger really kind of a bit lost and only Jetstar there, there are opportunities. But certainly our focus is not on a 24 million market, our focus is on the 600 million market. Right, so no opportunity there. So that's uh, where you perhaps see the growth coming out of Australia on international flights. And what about AirAsia X itself? I, I mean, of course, you, you guys own it, more or less. Uh, where, where's the growth coming for that airline? I think, um, I mean, they've just started into Korea. Um, in, in a very short period, one week, they sold 120,000 seats. They'll be operating into Japan. Obviously, lots of growth in um, Australia and northern China and India. They've opened Delhi and Bombay. That's, it's been a perfect symbiotic relationship. We have separated the airline. Uh, yes, we own 16%, but at some stage, we will dispose of that stake. It's purely an investment. But AirAsia X has brought our brand to places that we would have never got to and are bringing lots Johnny. of people into our network. So it's a fantastic symbiotic relationship. Tony, uh, you've also not made it quite... Uh, well, you've uh, told us about your ambitions to own a football club at some point or the other. Are you still planning to do that at some stage? <laughs> Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, there was, West Ham was there. I thought it was a good opportunity, but uh, that's gone. So we'll just focus on uh, AirAsia. Are you sure? Are you sure you, are you can see a little glint in your eye that that's really what you want to Abs do. <laughs> Absolutely sure. Tony, right thank now. Absolutely sure. Unless, Tony. unless Bloomberg unearths a great opportunity for me. <laughs> great. Thanks a lot for that.